This is uh, sort of an update on an ongoing project that uh, has been with me for uh, almost a decade now. I picked up an old ARC-5 World War II receiver uh, about eight, 10 years ago. And um, Very had cool. a number of what I shall call kindly undocumented modifications to it. And uh, uh, for, I brought it in two years ago with a homeroom night after I'd gone through it, replaced all of the, uh, the capacitors. The, these uh, R5 units were uh, World War II vintage, were made in at least four or five different frequency ranges, mostly for airborne communication, air to air, uh, air out of ground uh, to air for uh, navigation purpose purposes. And this is what happens to cover the six to nine megahertz range, 40 meters, basically. So um, I, re I replaced the, uh, the capacitors in it, which were wax filled, uh, paper wax uh, foil capacitors that were notorious for leaking and shorting out uh, over time and uh, with, with unpleasant results. And uh, this one also had the, the BFO coil removed from it. So it was AM only. And uh, I built a new BFO circuit, uh, basically uh, it's an Armstrong oscillator. So I wound a coil on the toroid rather than having the little transformer that, that was original coil that was there. And I got it working. Yeah, at least the IF was working. And, um, and then I came across the uh, very unfortunate discovery that the, the three front end coils in under the deck, the antenna, the RF, um, also RF amplifier and the local oscillator mixer coils had all been either modified or burned out. So the whole unit went on the back shelf for about three, four, five years. And, and uh, I got, came out a couple months ago when I got interested again. No, it actually came out last summer because I, I found an article online on a description of all of the coils and how they were wound. So what I did was go through it and essentially rewound them myself. The antenna coil with a single winding, a parallel LC circuit, receiver coil with, with a uh, tuned circuit and basically a, a large coil that feeds the plate foliage and acts as both as a choke and uh, exciting the, the other winding. And they... The um, mixer coil. It has a tuned circuit for the the heterodyne oscillator and uh, and coupling to the IF. But for some reason, even though I had the, I got those working and I could put a signal generator in it's at uh, somewhere between six and nine megahertz. And if I laid the lead from the signal generator on top of the grid coupling of the mixer tube, I could decode it. So, but the RF stage was not working. So that said, what's wrong with the RF stage? Uh, so last week I had some time and I said, let's take uh, figure out what gives with the RF stage. This part originally had a cover over, figure out how to get the cover off took the better part of an hour. <laughs> And, and lo and behold, um, it's really simple, but what's really impressive is how well these things are made. There's a worm drive, which can't really be seen from the, the tuning with anti-backlash gears on the, an the antenna tune circuit, the RF amplifier tune circuit, and the mixer tune circuit. And it's very smooth and very clean. Um, I'm still, the process of troubleshooting it, trying to figure out what gives, um, why I can put signal on here and I can't see it with the grid of the next two, no matter where I tune the uh, <laughs> tune the uh, the capacitors. So uh, uh, it's it's a work in progress, and uh, I don't know what I'll do with it eventually. I I have a matching transmitter for it. That's the uh, the the the, the, the coupler to the grid of the mixer tube. Um, it has a plate cap, which is the mixer, or a cap on top, which is the mixer terminal, not the plate. So I pulled the two tubes, 
And this was a, another RF transformer like that. I had to do that to work the, uh, the, the cover out and re first remove about 35 three by 48 screws holding it together. Don't, don't touch the cap. Well, you know, you can touch the cap. There's no voltage on it. Oh, I mean, you, when it's working. Oh, you'll get a lot of hum and you'll probably detune it. <laughs> yeah. Um, so it's... So 350 it's, volts? Uh, no, they, the max you remember is 250. I, they'll run as low as about 110. So I tend to run them, well, whatever the power transformer I find in junk boxes, somewhere around 150, 170 volts works on it. So it's a work in progress. I've uh, rebuilt one other... Arc five that had uh, one of the little capacitors short down below, and uh, one of the low frequency ones, and I can actually use it as a, a poor man, a Q fiber, which was the the second IF. You come out of our, the old receivers, the single conversion receivers, at 455 kilohertz, put it into the the Q fiber with an 85 kilohertz IF and very narrow filtering, and it acts as a, a real selectivity aid. So it's fun. Do you know this stuff out of airplanes? These were in airplanes. Yeah, they were typically, this would be the receiver. There'd be a matching transmitter. Um, the um, they're used for air-to-air -air communication or air-to-ground. See how smooth, this is, this is just a piece of rubber hose. In yeah, here. originally they had a cable. Yeah, it's yeah. a spline drive and, and trying to find the right spline is not impossible mm -hmm. anymore. So you, you clued something together. Do you know Mike Murphy up in what's it, Manchester? Manchester? No, I don't. WU2V? WU2V. V. WU2 Delta. Okay. Um, he's restored a bunch of these and he's got several YouTube videos. He's got a oh. small series on YouTube <laughs> where he goes through a couple of these transmitter and receiver yeah. and all that. In fact, he looked like he had an affinity to all the two rigs, yeah. specifically the Arc 5 stuff. Sure. So take a look at him. Mike is a very articulate guy. He's an engineer by trade. He's, I'll look him he's, up. He's yeah. somewhere yeah. in our in our vintage. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, uh, uh, many many a ham in the fifties and sixties uh, used an R five for their first receiver. Oh, yeah. I, I, and he goes through the history of that when he was a kid too. Yeah, I think also, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. They were going for under ten bucks in, yeah. in, in the Radio Row in New York City. Radio Shack. I've been I've been trying to find these at the ham fest. I find them totally beat up. But after I watched my series, I said. Yeah. I gotta yes. get my hands on the trans uh, transfer and receiver. You guys must know uh, uh, the electronic store in uh, Little Victoria. Oh, yeah, right down at the yeah, uh, yeah. box of those things. That they so that's good. Yeah. Oh, oh. But yeah, look up, look, look, look up Mike when you go yeah. home. Look up Mike on YouTube, W2D. Okay. And you'll find that he had three or four videos where he was restoring okay. a couple of these. He, he, he this took, took a lot of work. Yeah, it oh, took yeah. a fair amount of work and um, winding it by hand. The, the thing that really puzzled me was the, the RF coil. Initially, this was a universal wound. You can the universal wound coils have the, the honeycomb arrangement, and there's no way I had a machine or to do that. To do that. So I said, well. Well, that was, Inductance was is what really matters. So I used a couple of cable ties to make a channel and wound the same number of turns within it. It came out resonating right about the right frequency. Nice, nice. So, did it originally use one, was one like that? Did it originally use the Litz wire? Uh, the Litz wire was it? Was the original coil was wound? The yeah. honeycomb. Oh wound. yeah. Did they use that Litz wire? Kind of feels like a spring. Oh wire yeah. Wire. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. They. Uh, but yeah. the. the that was the only winding that was the uh, universal wound. The rest were straight, straight windings. So that's where used to do. So I, uh, that's, those are just cable ties that I used to form a channel, so, they, <laughs> so the wire didn't spread out all over the place. <laughs> Same well, that's, width as that's the obvious. universal. That's obvious. <laughs> what are you using for a power supply for? Now using a dial. Oh, right? it's. Um, I I have a little home brew supply, a little transformer to put out about two hundred. 250 volts sure. and um, and I used to choke input filter and, and a okay. resistor to, to knock it down to about 200. Right, so um, yeah. yeah. This one was the chassis is in beautiful condition. Yeah, I mean there's a there's a this is essentially an RF gain control uh -huh. uh, BFO off BFO on headphone jack 
antenna terminal. I may replace that with a BNC connector. So this plane survives. Yeah, yes. that plane yes. survives. Yes. Yeah, and uh, yes. and it's, right. the, the calibration is right on. I mean, how, many, how many new hams these days know what a BFO is? Oh my God. Yeah, you yeah. just turn the, the knob so yeah. it says SSB. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. What's the wording on that? Mm -hmm. So it was a, you know, it's a, it's a fun project. And oh, it'd be great to a see line that. It's, it's, that's it's that a, line. a couple years older than I am. <laughs> yeah, look at Mike. Mike, look, Mike has also written for Electric Radio. Magazine. Oh, yeah. yeah I, I subscribe. I do too. He's got a bunch of articles. And in fact, I think several of his articles about this. Yeah. He did YouTube showed up in that magazine yeah. as well. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. that. that's a and this is an added audio transformer because initially it was a high impedance uh, transformer, but this was put on for uh, to get it down to eight ohms. And then, nice. You know, you know what you can't see on TV is that it's got that vintage smell. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> it's got that vintage. Don't you love turning putting power and stuff really? like that? Oh, you know, when you get that aroma, you get that. All these electronics have that. They got this benzene base. No. No soy sauce. That was my friend's smell. Now the kids have had all friendly smells. This is a BC four fifty five. Yeah, I can't see what's after the next letter. Yeah. That's the um, that's the highest frequency one. They had three of them, right? That um, and there were different frequency ranges for well, the they were all the same chassis, the same design. The guts and, were and there was a the BC four fifty three was known as the Q fiber that covered the yeah. navigation band one hundred ninety to five hundred and thirty sure. kilohertz or yeah. something where the non directional aircraft beacons operate. What yeah. fewer left these days. Mm -hmm. Then there was a fairly rare one that covers the broadcast band, 550 to 1.5 megahertz. Mm -hmm. I used one of that, one of those in the basement to listen to you know, talk radio. Exactly. Down. Why not? Don't want to listen to the hams. Yep. Then yep. there's, uh, I think, a 1.5 to 3, the 3 to 6, and then 6 to 9. I think the one Mike restores in his YouTube is, uh, is, is in the 80 meter range, the 3, the three megahertz range. Yeah. He's, got, he's got a couple of them. Oh, I'll, I'll look that up. And, uh, Mike Murphy? Yeah, Mike Murphy, W-U-2-D. Um, um, he's actually speaking here in March. Mike is? Mike is speaking here in March about construction and restoration. So <laughs> funny oh, that you lead into that. Great guy to get. I've come to know him oh. because I found his videos a few years back. Yeah. And I ran into him up at Nearfest. So each time I go, I kind of stop by and visit him. He's, like, he's off at exit two on 101. Bob, it's funny because I just literally wrote down, okay, you know, the, for the next two speakers who they are. And not 30 seconds ago, wrote Mike's name and call sign down here on the, on the paper <laughs> to introduce him as that, a future speaker. That will be a great talk. He is a really good presenter. Very articulate, speaks in plain terms, but in technical terms. So he captures you know, uh, an untrained audience as well as a trained audience. Really, really good. Technical, technical lecture. You give him an A plus. I give him an A plus. Yeah. Thumbs up all the way. Any, any other questions, comments? Good going, buddy. Can I have? Good going. Yeah. Yeah. A pleasant surprise. I didn't yeah, think I got to see that stuff we heard earlier. Didn't we? <laughs> no. It does. No, but, hey, that, that's what gets new ham. The ones <laughs> we just need to listen to appreciate that. This oh, is all of the world. Oh, there's, the there's a guy on 630. I don't know if this is Park or not. He's got an old military. Trip oh, yeah. Here, and it's just they <laughs> chirp so oh, bad. Oh, it's oh, hilarious. No, no, you, know, you know it's him. You know, it's him because when he calls the Q5, we certainly be able to hear those guys. I drift, I drift towards this stuff myself. I mean, I deal with high tech stuff. I'm getting close to retirement. I put a lot of analyzers and VAs and all that stuff. And when I come home, the thing I want to do is play the roller radio. Like warm roller too. Like the smell. You can see the parts. We would see like eyesight. If you if you hear of any that need a good R5, need a good home, I'm sure that uh, 